This is John Montgomery with the JR Group. Welcome to our interview series. Today I'm sitting down with Tom Bosaker of Realty Title here in Clarksville, Tennessee. Tom's going to explain to us about all things title when it relates to uh, buying or selling a home. He's going to talk about title insurance, closing on properties, and um, a whole lot more. So excited to have him join us. Look forward to the conversation. Hey, good morning, Tom. How are you? Good morning, John. Doing wonderful. How about yourself? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thanks for joining us this morning. Absolutely. My pleasure. Appreciate you making the time. Got it. All right. So, Tom, tell us a little bit about how you got into the real estate slash title business. Uh, sure. Um, uh, when I was younger, I used to be a tile setter. I actually had an injury that uh, was going to prevent me from setting tile ever again. So I had to get a temporary job, which uh, led me to working for a title co- or an escrow company in California. And subsequently, I went from that uh, escrow company to another one where I met my wife of 34 plus years now. And um, Nicole. It just Yes, Nicole. And uh, from there, it's just gone. And I, I am... I'm a title geek. I love to dive into things, and it's just always been just uh, a pleasure and a treat, and it's been a lot of fun dealing with people and customers as yourself and, and you know, buyers and sellers. It's just been, it's actually been a blast. So. Yeah. Well, you know, so as a realtor, I work with my clients, and we're exposed to titles, the title process. But for our listeners, can you explain, you know, what does a title company do? I've asked myself that question quite a few times. No, I'm just kidding. Um, we do searches on the property. We try to go historical, um, which we go back 30, 35 years usually. Okay. To make sure that somebody who's buying a piece of property is clear of anything that can come back and maybe bite them from a previous owner, a previous situation. We check for liens and judgments against people, buyers and sellers alike. Um we we search properties. We 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 really just kind of dive into it to make sure that when a buyer buys a piece of property, that it is their property, that they own it. Okay, so we recommend surveys to our clients, mm-hmm. and and some people um, some people will order a survey to be one hundred percent certain of their boundaries, um, but others won't. Right, so probably the majority of people don't. Why? is having a clear title so crucial to real estate transactions? Well, you want to show sole ownership. You want to you want to make sure that nobody can come back and say, hey, that was my grandpappy's property. I'm going to sue you because that should be mine. Okay. Um, you do the, We do the title insurance, make sure that it goes through. If there, or it goes all the way back and it's clear all the way through. Um, if at some point in time somebody didn't have title insurance, that may have to be addressed depending on how long ago. Okay. Um, if it was a transaction before, then affidavits and whatnot have to be prepared and information has to be sought after at that point. But typically by the time we get in this day and age, property has changed hands numerous times. Title insurance has been done. And that title insurance is what ensures that that buyer is buying a property in their name and their name only. So if somebody comes and sues them, says, hey, that's my grandpappy's land you know, off of it, I'm going to sue you. If you don't have title insurance, you have to fight it on your own dime. Okay. Own attorneys, own money, with title insurance, because if we're the ones who said that you own it, then you come to us, get to our claims department, they take care of it at that point. Okay, so you mentioned having a clear title, and you mentioned title insurance. So the title insurance, can you explain a, just a little bit more how that protects the buyer? Sure. Um, title insurance is different than your car or your homeowner's insurance. Okay. Um, car and homeowner's insurance protects you for what's going to happen in the future. That's why you have to pay it every year. Okay. What might happen? Title insurance, you pay it one time when you buy a property, and that protects you from the past because we do the search. We make sure that everything, all the, the entire chain of title is clear all the way through to you. If there's a blemish somewhere, we address it at that point. And the blemish could be uninsured deed. Um, somebody passed away and it wasn't you know, recorded, whatnot. It doesn't happen very often, but it does happen sometimes. And that's why you get the title search with your title insurance. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Now, you said you've been doing this for about 34 years? 30, uh, 36. Okay. So so over 35 years. So how have you seen, going back to this title insurance, how have you seen that evolve in the last three and a half decades? 
be quite interesting because it has evolved in in respect to um, we have to watch out for a lot of fraud. Okay. Recently. Okay. Um, of course, back in the day when I first started, criminals weren't as prolific as they are nowadays, as far as electronically. Okay. Um, so there there are a lot of other um, stop gaps that we have to go through. Um, some insurances, uh, part of the title insurance, uh, sometimes is uh, covered with um, a lender who a defrauding lender. You know, if the lender's bad. So it, I've I've seen the changes as far as the protection against for the for the consumer against the the fraud or you know the the person who's trying to defraud somebody as respect to that. Um, but the insurance has still been the insurance. I mean, the policies cover different items you know throughout the years. Um, probably in the last 10 years, I've really gotten into the policies themselves. And, uh, again, I'm a title geek, so I love the, the history behind properties and what goes on and sure. that type of thing. So, so if I were to purchase a home and, uh, I close with your company, which is Realty Title. Correct. Um, after that property is closed, I have my title insurance. How, how do we stay uh, connected? How do you continue to engage with with the client after the, the closing of the transaction? There's no real direct engagement. Um, but what I offer, because I've been doing this so long, is I, I don't let people leave thinking that this is the only time they can talk to me. Sure. Um, I always have my cell number with everybody on everything that I have because if somebody has a question, I want them to call and ask. I want to make them myself available for them. And I do. I get phone calls. I get text messages. I do get those uh, you know, throughout past customers from two, three years ago. I still get them from California. So I, I, I'm a transplant, sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, but, um, we still love you. I, I get them from California asking me questions about Tyler Escrow back then from clients from, you know, eight, nine years ago. So that the post-transaction, um, there's no real direct communication. I don't follow up with them every year, every two years, sure. or whatnot. I okay. just make myself available 24-7. Okay. Well, that makes sense. You mentioned kind of this electronic fraud. Can you tell our listeners about some of the mail fraud that you uh, have seen and that they might experience after they purchase a home? Absolutely. Um, When you buy a home, you will get inundated with mail. Okay. Fraudulent mail. Um, Most of it is um, the criminals are trying to separate you from your money as quickly as possible. Uh, The most common one that we have right now is um, they're anywhere from 100 to $150. Uh, the letter looks very official, and it will state something to the effect of the state of Tennessee requires you to have a copy of your warranty deed. Send us $150, we'll send you a copy of your warranty deed. All right. The state of Tennessee does not require that because it is a public record. So there's no reason for you to have to have a copy. When transaction closes with us, within about two weeks, you get your title policy and you get a copy of the original recorded uh, warranty deed. Okay. If you lose that, I tell people, call me. I can get a copy for you, and I don't charge for it. Um, but that's the biggest scam out there as far as coming through the mail. Uh, and it, it lasts for about three months. My rule of thumb is if you didn't ask for the invoice, don't pay it. Okay. Well, that sounds like good advice. So, <laughs> so aside from some of the fraud that is out there, unfortunately, what are some common issues that come up during the title search that, that someone might experience? A lot of times what we encounter are um, divorces, okay, deaths. Um, maybe somebody has a trust and somebody's passed away. And so those, those are items that have to be addressed in the beginning because there's, I, I can't give a, an exact, these are the steps you have to follow because every file is different. Um, but we encounter typically, and that's what the sellers are, the death and divorces. Um, we have to make sure that airship is, is perfected. We have to make sure that the divorce is followed, you know, through an MDA, so uh, which is marriage dissolution agreement. Okay. So those those are the items that that usually pop up. We don't have it happen often, to where we get to the end of a transaction, we find out oh they're divorcing. Right. We typically know that in the beginning, so we can address it and deal with it at that point. Um, but there are times when something pops up and there's a deed of trust that is there that. The sellers may have gotten a second 15 years ago. Okay. They got their home equity loan. They used the money. They paid it off, but it's still there. They don't think that they have it anymore because they paid it off. Now we have to start chasing that down. If that company is still in business, 
can be pretty easy. But if that company has gone defunct or somebody else bought them, then we have a chain that we have to start following. And it can be time consuming as heck. But we, that's when we get the sellers involved, help us out, make the phone calls. You know, sure. Because a lot of times they won't talk to us because we're not the actual borrower. So. Okay, so when you when you discover a, a dispute or an issue with a title, can you tell us a little bit about how how and who, um, with reference to who's on your team, who do you have working with and for you that help resolve some of these issues? Yeah, I've got uh, Jill Simmons and uh, Sharbeth Mills are, are in our office. Great, great gals. We have a great team, the three of us. Um, I, because I'm the title geek, um, I take it upon myself to make sure that I can clear those items. Okay. And I just start, you basically start backtracking to where it begins and then go forward to where the fault is. So, um, I try to keep those gals away from it. They do enough for that office that I don't need to burden them with anything further. (laughs) So, you know, um, but I, I try to make sure that we get those close. I work closely with our underwriters, with our in-house attorney, um, and I get direction with that way as well. I, I know what needs to be done, but I always confirm it with them so that we're not liable and that the new buyer is now not going to be put out or have an issue later okay. on. Okay. Well, I'm glad you just mentioned that. You said an in-house attorney because a lot of times when we're talking with clients, uh, many people have heard the term closing attorney. So how does your team at Realty Title differ from, let's say, an attorney who specializes in closings and or does closings on the side, so to speak? I don't think I do them on the side. I don't think they can do them on the side, but yeah. But what I meant, what what I was getting at is they do closings in addition to some other Correct. legal practice. Right. And they can do that as, um, as a practicing real estate attorney. Um, and they will get with underwriters so as all insurance companies, they have underwriters who okay. are actually the, I guess, the money behind it, okay. you know, type of thing. So I could be, you know, John Smith, attorney at law, and I want to write title insurance. Well, I'm going to sign up with First American, Fidelity, Old Republic, Stewart. Those are the big four. Okay. Um, and once I get approval and whatnot, as far as they're concerned, then I can start writing title insurance at that point as an attorney. Because we have in-house attorneys and we're licensed through the state of Tennessee, we have all of our offices, which in Middle Tennessee, we have 10, 10 offices. Wow. Okay. Um, but our underwriters, we're licensed and insured under and through them as well. Okay. So I'm not a closing attorney. I'm not an attorney at all. Sure. Um, but I am a closer. I will sit there and explain documents to you. I will explain what's going on. If I don't know, I get the answer. Right. From the in-house attorney. From the in-house attorney. Right. Okay. I can pick up the phone, call him. I've got a cell number. And unfortunately, sure. he's a Steelers fan. <laughs> well, you know, can't hold that against him too much. I but, do, though. <laughs> um, so have there been any recent regulation changes that have impacted your business? Not on my end. Okay. Um, not on the consumer's end. What has come up has been a lot of the uh, fraud alerts that we're being told about. Okay. Um, if somebody is going to show up on a um, on a federal list of do not sell, do not buy list, um, it's called Patriot uh, Search is what we do. Okay. If they're from out of the country and they pop up on this list, that's a no-go, period. Um, the land fraud that has been very prevalent has, seems to be coming up more and more typically is where somebody is posing as a seller. Um, you own a property, you own it free and clear. Okay. I go to a lender saying, hey, I'm John Montgomery. Hmm. You get me a loan, I want a loan for $150,000, I'm gonna do some improvements on the land, yada, yada, yada. The lender says, okay, great. I have a fake ID, I've got a fake social. Lender approves everything, I've got fake income. You know, I can give you my 1040s, that's fine. Everything's gonna be legit. You get to a certain Percentage, from what I understand, the lenders are really lax. Like, you know, you got a three hundred thousand dollar property. I only want hundred grand out of it. Okay, yeah, let, let's do this. You get a, a notary who's going to do a fraudulent notary to sign everything. They give you the money, and you're gone. Next thing you know, you, as the actual owner of the property, are getting notifications in the mail saying, "Where's our payment? Where's our payment? Where's our payment?" Um, that's when you're alerted. If that happens. You can give me a call. I can do a search on the property, see what's happened, see if something is 
been recorded that you're not aware of. Uh, there are companies out there that want to charge three, four, five hundred bucks a year to monitor your property. Um, it's more scare tactics. A sheriff is not going to walk up to your door and tell you to get out. You'll get notification. They post them on the doors. I used to work for a foreclosure attorney in California. There are steps that have to be done by federal regulations as well as state okay. before a sheriff shows up on your door asking you to leave. Yeah, that wouldn't be fun. No. Yeah. No. So we we've got a we've got a property up uh, in Kentucky, and yep. I can't imagine uh, dealing with that. Um, a majority of properties, because there's a loan against them, you know, 80, 90, 100 percent VA loans, they're not a target. Right. No, but they won't even be looked at. Um, when people buy properties free and clear, that's when I let them know to be aware. Okay. If pay attention to your mail, if you think something squirrely's going on, give me a call. I can check it out. Um, but they they're going for equity. Okay. That's all they're going for, and that's been that's been very huge. Um, it, it been a, a big reminder that we're getting from all of our underwriters. Watch out for this. Watch out for that. All right. And once they catch one person, boom. All right. Um, yeah. So it's it's. So if you're a landowner and own it free and clear, pay attention. Pay attention. So Tom, a lot of our clients are either military or uh, oftentimes uh, people who are moving out of Clarksville. And I know you offer several different options when it comes to actually closing on a property. Can you explain that for our listeners? Absolutely. Um, we prefer, of course, everybody to come into the office okay. and sign in front. Um, I'm, I'm a notary. Jill's a notary. Sharp is a notary. The company has direct knowledge that somebody showed up and they, they did sign and we did verify. Um, if they can't, as a result of being deployed, you know, PCSing or just moving out for work, whatnot, or just retiring. Who, who knows? We have options of, we have a mobile notary service that can come out and see them wherever they are, sign everything, and send everything back to us. Basically, the buyer and seller don't have to do anything. Um, there have been times when typically we do it with the sellers. We'll allow it when they have their own notary. Maybe they want to go to their bank. Um, so we will email or overnight the documents to them, whichever they prefer. They'll take them to their respective notary, get everything notarized, and send it back to us. Um, my kids are grown and out of the house, so I also try to work with people's work schedule. If they need to sign at 7 o'clock at night, I'll sign at 7 o'clock at night. I've signed as early awesome. as 6 in the morning because they've gone to PT. That's the only time they have. Boom, let's do it, and we get it done. I've witnessed that. Yeah. Um, a lot of times with the military, we're seeing the power of attorneys, uh, which usually we can work better with the spouse because they're not – in the military so that they have a different schedule and we can work around that. And that's typically because they're either going out in the field at the time of closing or they're PCSing ahead and, or they're uh, being deployed. Okay. So and we try to work with those families as much as we can and, and do what we can. I, I mean, if it has to be Saturday, it's Saturday. I mean, it, it, it is what it is. Um, it, it's all about the BS in this business. And that's the buyer and the seller, whatever's going to work for them. So that's that's how I approach this and, and deal with it. So Awesome. Well, and like I said, I, I've seen how you go above and beyond, and very appreciative of that. You've uh, you, you've held a lot of uh, transactions together, so uh, very thankful. Um, <clears throat> speaking of transactions, so buyers and sellers are confronted with what what's kind of generically referred to as closing cost. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got seller expenses, buyer expenses, title expenses, and I know when I first got into real estate. There's a lot to, you know, keep track of as far as which uh, expense falls into which of those three buckets, so to speak. Can right. you elaborate on title expenses and perhaps how different title companies might charge a different fee for their services? Sure. Um, the title insurance is a filed rate with the state of Tennessee. Okay. And on the contract, it says who's paying for the title fees or title expenses. And per the contract, the title expenses are the title insurance policy for the owners, the lenders, and the search fee. Okay. Um, those vary by, of course, the value of the property because the insurance is, is commensurate with the, with the transaction total. Next, are you got your um, closing fees. Those are the variable with each company that you can actually shop for if you'd like. Um, ours in Clarksville with our office are not as high as they would be in, let's say, for example, Brentwood or Columbia. Um, those are higher end, and uh, not that Clarksville isn't, but 
they just have a different uh, demographic or a different um, set of uh, fees for those areas. Right, because me- there, there's so much difference in median home sale price. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So ours start down at the four and a quarter on a buyer and 400 for a seller. Okay. Buyer side is typically a little bit more because there's more work when they have a loan. Um, we also have a CPL fee, which the lender requires a closing protection letter saying that, yes, we will close and the lender's protected, any gap coverage, things of that nature. Um, uh, one uh, item that uh, has come up recently has been what's called a closing lock fee. We use a company, uh, Closing Lock, which we send everything, comes back and forth through that company, and it is um, uber secure. It is, it's secure to the point where sometimes it gets frustrating because you can't access. Um, it can be almost too secure, but it, is, um, it has been very, very uh, uh, helpful uh, we have, we've been, uh, with the use of this company and this service, we've been able to get information back and forth from buyers and sellers without worry. Before it was an email, they'd have to fill out a document that included driver's license numbers, social security numbers, addresses, and then they would email it back. It's open there on the World Wide Web. Sure. Um, so we, we really locked down, but that's, that's probably the newest fee. I don't know if every company uses them. I, I don't think they do. But the closing fees themselves, when it comes down to that, they, those will vary by company because those are not a filed rate. We don't have to follow a particular. So I've, I've even gone to the point where if somebody's trying to whittle down their costs and fees, I, I can adjust some things to, to make it work. Okay. I wanted to uh, go back to something you mentioned, two terms. You said owner's title insurance and lender's title insurance. Can you explain the differences between those two? Most certainly. The uh, lender's policy protects the lender. If you're not getting a loan, there's not going to be a loan policy. Uh, The owner's policy protects the buyer. They're going to be the owner of the property, so that's their title policy. And that is those, the owner's policy is the one fee that I see negotiated the most. Okay. Well, that makes sense. And your company offers discounts to is it military personnel? Act, active military, first okay. responders, teachers, um, the police, fire, the uh, 911 operator. You know, we try to make sure that everybody who's in, you know, uh, in those industries are taken care of. Well, and we cut those fees in half. I appreciate that as a veteran and my wife, uh, my wife's a teacher, so yeah. we appreciate it. Absolutely. So kind of looking ahead, um, what advice would you give to someone who's looking to buy or sell a home? And they, they haven't put it on the market or they haven't actively started looking, but just in your experience. Patience. Okay. That's the biggest thing is patience. So don't push it. You know, let it come. Make it happen. Or not make it happen, but, you know, make, wait for it to happen. Don't try to push things. That's what I've seen the biggest flaw for a buyer or seller is that they just pound away and pound away. No, no, this is how it has to be. And then a deal falls apart. Okay. Patience is the biggest thing. Um, if there are questions, you can always call me. I mean, I, I will take calls from anybody at any time, anywhere. So. All right. Well, I appreciate that. And that's 30, 35 plus years of experience <laughs> talking. So patience is the takeaway. So kind of reflecting on, on that 35 plus year career, what advice would you give uh, the younger Tom, just kind of getting into it. Probably the same thing. Patience. Uh, when I first started, I was, um, I mean, goodness, my early twenties and, um, you're full of fire and brimstone at that point in time. You know, um, I on occasion had flown off the handle and got myself in trouble as a result of that. So rather than stopping, evaluating, and then responding, I would, just respond, knee-jerk reaction. Sure. And um, sure. that is the one thing that I wish I could go back on. I still, to this day, remember things that have happened in the past that haunt me because of that knee-jerk reaction, feelings that were hurt or people that, you know, upset at that point in time. Um, so I would tell my my, uh, my younger self, relax, one at a time, don't get overwhelmed. Well, speaking of your younger self, I know you're seventh grandchild yep. was born today, yep. correct? Yes, that is correct. And Maverick Bosecker. Maverick. So congratulations on Thank that. You. And uh, I know you're big into fishing. So kind of what's next? What's next for Tom? 
Well, after this, I'm going to have a uh, glass of whiskey and a nap. That, well, there you go. There you That's go. That's about it. <laughs> it's 5 o'clock somewhere. Exactly. Exactly. Well, well, Tom, thanks for sharing your time and all of your uh, experience with us today. Um, very thankful and uh, very appreciative of you and all that you and your team uh, do for our clients and anyone in the real estate space, um, quite frankly, in Middle Tennessee. So very appreciative. Well, thank you for that. And I appreciate your continued support. Absolutely, brother. Thanks. Yep. Oh, 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 oh,